out there on safari this afternoon. Thanks for joining us for the highlight show. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and good afternoon everyone and welcome to your very own sunset safari right here in the African bush. My name is Amy and together with me today behind the camera is Panda. There's his thumb. It is so good to have you all with us. Remember that this is a live and interactive show. So please do make sure that you send through your comments and your questions. You can do that in a variety of different ways. And uh, that can either be on the website, on the Wild Earth app, or on the YouTube chat stream. Or if you just wanna say hello, let us know your thoughts. You can join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Wild Earth. Now we had an African monarch butterfly there, which as we were driving, I said, Panda, you won't believe it, but there's a butterfly that's uh, sitting still and he managed to spot it as well. It has, there we go. He's just got it in the background now. What a beautiful butterfly it is indeed. Also known as the African plain tiger. And it's moving off. Now, like I said, we are slowly making our way um, into the northeastern side of Juma, checking around some of the water holes. We went past Gari Dam on the way, but we are just excited for the afternoon to be in the sun, be feeling warm. The breeze is blowing. It's going to be a fantastic time. And I can't wait for Cedric to get out here with us as well. And we're both hoping to see some spots, I think. I know Panda is, I am too. Um, who knows, maybe now, but that might happen a little bit more towards the evening time when it gets a bit cooler and darker. But I'm also going to keep my ear to the radio as well and make sure that we don't miss any updates of sightings um, in, around, in and around uh, Juma. And yes, indeed. All right, let's get going. Thanks, Patricia. Hello, you say hello, Amy, and happy cat today. Indeed, indeed, it has. And we've already seen a cat today, which has been amazing. Um, I'm really happy for all the viewers at home and Cedric as well. And I managed to see lots and lots of lion tracks. <laughs> and we do know that Chela is in that area around the Mulwati dry riverbed with. Uh, hopefully still her two cubs. I do think that she is still denning there, which is wonderful news. So here's to hoping for more cats on Cat Day. Queenie, I'm so glad. I'm so glad we could start with that butterfly. That was really just such luck, to be honest with you, um, as we were driving by. And you say that you love butterflies. Well, I don't, I don't know if anyone could not like a butterfly. Hey, Panda. Yeah, I love butterflies. <laughs> you say that he loves butterflies. Uh, I don't know anyone who doesn't like a butterfly. They always so beautiful and just flying around doing their thing fluttering by as I like to say <laughs> 
sorry Jared can you just go again with that you broke up slightly For sure. All right, everyone. Well, we're going to carry on and you are going to check out what's happening with the weather. have it that's what the weather is currently doing everybody and um, there are still a few clouds in the sky so luckily every now and again it does sort of get a little bit overcast now here on the left hand side in this torchwood tree let's just show them under the nest here I don't believe it's currently active but when I was here um, last year in October, we had a pair of African harrier hawks that were nesting in there. You can see in sort of the fork of that tree, it's, there's a lot of little twigs and sticks there. And that was the nest. Do you remember, Panda? Yeah, that was very cool. And we always would see them both around here. Um, perched in the tree or sitting on the nest which was an awesome um, time to have birds nesting I'm not sure if if they were here at all this year uh, well in the sorry the end of last year or, or in the middle of um, since then if they visited at all but uh, maybe this year they'll come back around the same time um, birds of prey tend to have their chicks more um, in the drier months not all of them things like vultures for example um, the harrier hawks were in October so it just depends but that is very very cool and that tree that it's in I mentioned was a torchwood tree also known as a green thorn um, and it gets its name because when it's very very young still growing it has a lot of thorns which are green Justice you want to know if birds of prey uh, refurbish their old nests every breeding season and um, it is very common for them to reuse nesting sites and I'm sure if there's a bit of upkeep that needs to be done then they will do that so whether they need to repair it a little bit or add in extra um, lining and things like that uh, but it is common that they will uh, reuse their nesting sites and often even come back to the same one every year not only birds of prey um, at a lodge I worked at we had a pair of woodland kingfishers that came back to the same hole in a tree on the on the tea deck every single well not pretty much it was about three or four years in a row um, I'm not sure what what is if they've used it again since then but um, it is quite cool to know that birds do do that sometimes Another key feature of this sort of torchwood tree is the very unique trunk. <laughs> oh, Patisse, I'm so excited that, I'm so happy that you're excited to be here and you're looking forward to what we can find you today. Me too. It has, um, we saw a few impalas earlier and so we'll see if there's anything else that comes out to say hello. Um, but yes, Panda's showing you now what I like to call almost um, uh, tunnels or, 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 or uh, the trunk is almost in funnels or like it's it's got tubes that come down and, and form a similar-ish I guess to a fig tree in in some ways but it's very unique um, and a distinctive feature of a, a thorn a torchwood tree sorry Another really cool thing about this tree 
is something I will tell you just now. <laughs> is about the seeds of this tree actually and um, it's the reason why so the green thorn is the one name but the torchwood is the other name and that's because it comes from their seeds um, their seeds actually hold a lot of oil and um, if you are able to uh, get them to you know get that oil out um, you can light them dry them out a bit and then light them and they should actually burn like a torch and that's where they get that name from the actual seed of this uh, tree its its scientific name is Balanites Mugami and sometimes out here in the bush rangers often refer to trees like a Balanites for example and um, that's what this torchwood's name is Uh, Joe, I just got from the question from Lola is do all birds peck at trees? Okay, Lola, um, no, not all birds peck at trees. I would say that's something that's quite unique to the woodpecker um, and we get a few different species of them and they're the ones who actually look um, looking for food and pecking at holes in the tree. Other birds that also um, may do similar things like that are things maybe um, like barbets, for example, um, but for the most part, it's the woodpeckers. And then even the African Harrier Hawk actually may peck around at a tree because it's trying to find prey in um, some of the empty cavities that are in the tree trunks and, and things like that. We actually saw interesting behavior of a willow warbler recently pecking at the bark of the tree trying to get some ants. Alright Panda, I think we are going to carry on. <clears throat> but very cool to show you that, show you the nest and tell you a little bit about a torchwood. I have spotted a dwarf mongoose everyone we're just gonna reverse slowly it has now disappeared which I'm not surprised but it may pop out again Panon was on top of the termite mount We just have to be patient. They do often disappear when they see a vehicle and then if we give it enough time, they might pop out. Thank you, Amy, and a good afternoon to everybody. My name is uh, Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got uh, Muscles and Paul. All right, so we're coming into the northern area here. We had line tracks coming back and forth here, so we just want to double check on something here. Um, a lot of lions are running around the side. So I want to see if there's nothing that's actually yeah, but I can't wait for this afternoon. I'm hoping that we're going to get some amazing sightings. For everybody, it's cat today. Saturday, cat today. Saturday, 
sorry, I think uh, I might have come through a little bit loud there. Eh? Let's just take a look. Are we going to find... Oh, there, we've got lions. We've got lions. We've got lions. We've got lions. And lions on a kill. Bird. Okay, so I have killed a kudu here. Oh my word. All right, so just gonna quickly stop here. A little bit of your discretion on this one. If you don't like uh, lions eating an animal, well, maybe just look away for a time being. But yeah, we've got uh, two lions. <laughs> look at this one. <laughs> wow. Oh my word! It looks like oh, this is the Talamati Prides. This is the two youngsters, and there's uh, the older females lying in the bushes there. You'll see just to the right. There's the older female from the Talamati Pride. There's the one female with the two youngsters. This is amazing. What a way to start our sun. Set safari on Saturday, cat today with this pride. They must have, they must have made this kill early or during the day. I am here yeah, on uh, Biffelzook uh, cut line. This on the fire break, not too far, maybe about uh, 200 meters east of a sandy patch road. Wow! Look at this. This female is trying to, I think she's just, <laughs> she wants to get to the ear. She's enjoying the, the ear there. So this is now going to be a proper meal for these three. Full grown kudu bull. Julia, no, Katada is now official with the with this. This is brilliant. Remember, we had those tracks of the lions this morning. Yeah, on the northern side, we actually on the falls. It looked like they were running up and down. We didn't really take notice. And I thought they went north, but it looks like they came south. And then, you know, this uh, this male kudu was taken down maybe early, or well, not early hours this morning, but maybe this uh, morning after our sunrise safari. <laughs> this young female is uh, oh they're quite uh, efficient hunters now and an older female has really taught these two youngsters a lot and I'm sure they assisted her in this whole hunt because to bring down a kudu that is not easy She doesn't know where to start. She's trying to. You can see the male, <coughs> a little bit bigger than she is. And these two, these uh, young ones are uh, just over two, two years, three months, some, something like that. Makey, what a way to start this drive! What a way! Fantastic, Makey. Yeah, I must. Say, I'm very happy on this find. This is brilliant, 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 brilliant stuff. panting hard so this will last them at least by I'll still be here to tomorrow tomorrow morning <laughs> you clearly can see how the the stomach it's, and of course the intestines so the stomach they'll leave because they don't really eat the stomach contents they'll eat the outs, outside of it so the membrane in it but they won't, they'll shake the stomach contents out. But they also go open the, the belly, so they go for the internal organs. That's the first thing they go for, internal organs, so the lungs and liver, kidney, all that stuff, the heart, everything that's high in protein. She's very excited, home Paul. She's, got a, she's full of beans, this young female. Mm. 
and she's full of blood. Hmm. Picky, yeah, no, these two youngsters have learned a lot. I, I I agree. I think I think because they were thrown really much in into like the deep end uh, with the, the older female and they were losing body condition. I think they they had to you know they had to kind of as you say it's like step up their game and learn quickly and try and assist the older female in these hunts. And that's why they've been doing that's that's why they've been so successful. How many times have you seen them in the last month with full bellies? And uh their body condition is all, you know, almost 100% again. So, yeah, no, these two have really kind of uh, come through very nicely. And it, it really helps that older female. I'm just hoping that this uh, kudu, as you can see now, they dragged it under a bush. So many times they'll kill it, maybe in the open somewhere, yeah, and then they'll try and drag it under a bush. And why they do that is then they try and kind of hide it from any prying eyes like the vultures so if vultures start flying around and they start seeing a kill they'll start coming down descending to like the dead trees around you and if the vultures start doing that what happens if you get any male lions around you hyenas they'll see that and then they'll kind of say hey but there's something there and then they'll start going into that area to follow up on exactly what is dead what you know if there's a carcass there so it's a good thing that at least they kind of uh, just uh, dragged it under, under this uh, combretum for the time being. <laughs> Julia, well, if they're going to try and wake the kudu up, it's a bit late now. Uh, I don't think that kudu is going to wake up anytime soon or ever again. It's done. <laughs> But it's a full-grown male kudu. Wow. Where did we see that male kudu this morning? I must say, I'm trying to... I can't remember. Hmm. full belly so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what comes plays out tonight and maybe the hyenas will start moving in here as well and we we're just talking about that this morning we we're saying that we haven't seen uh, many lion kills here on Juma for quite some time and uh, well here we go it's happy for this on the fire break on the southern side of the fire break And we'll see, they'll try and feed and then rest a bit. And feed and rest. Well, it's not like wild dogs and cheetah. Wild dogs and cheetah, they, when they bring something down, they'll try and finish that kill up as quick as possible before any other predators st steals it from them. Oh wow everyone, how exciting is that? Oh my goodness, absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy that Cedric was able to get up there uh, so quickly for you all. I am still making my way towards Buffles Hook Dam. Um, we just had to reroute for some good signal, so hopefully all of that is fine. I also am currently feeling some raindrops. Uh, there's quite a big grey cloud above us, so we. It's not. I'm not surprised. Uh, earlier today, this well, the sun came out, and then around lunchtime we had passing showers. It would be a bit of rain and then the sun would come out then a bit of rain and the sun would come out so I'm not surprised that there are a few drops falling but there's still lots of blue sky and sunshine around so I think it is going to be like this sort of weather uh, for the whole rest of the day
and absolutely I'm also excited to see what that carcass brings I was just saying to Panda if it is still completely whole which I believe it is um, there should be quite a bit still um, left for them to feed on tonight and even into tomorrow morning and then with that being said there's always the chance of things like hyenas or other smaller predators, maybe jackals, something like that. That would be cool. But what a day, cat a day indeed, wow everyone, really fantastic stuff, I'm so glad, leopards, lions, hopefully we'll find a cat of our own as well, that would be very very cool. And when you're looking out for things like cats, you've got to be able to be uh, careful to check in the shadows, especially when it has been quite warm. Kayla, ooh, you want to know if we can go to some hyena dens? We can certainly swing by. If nothing else comes up for us this afternoon, I'll go past Buffalsook Dam and then I'll loop around and back down um, into sort of the central um uh, central southern parts of Juma where those dens are and then we'll, we'll check up on them you never know there might be some updated activities happening around the dens so certainly Kayla will we'll see if we can get around to it for sure So we're still here with uh, the Talamati pride and the female is now tucking into the neck area. And see now and again she'll, she'll use the side of her mouth but now she's just pulling whatever she can and then now she uses the side just to cut through the hide and get through the meat. Anyhow, they will try and bring something like this down. I'm sure the female will be the, the older female will be the one that uh, grabs the kudu around the throat area to try and suffocate it. And I'm sure the younger ones will try and also be on top of the back end trying to topple this kudu over. She's got a nice little spot there. <laughs> oh, Martin, I'm hoping that if it does, the heat won't, uh, well, it might make the stomach pop, but if it does pop, I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to burst our way. Luckily, the wind is blowing that side, so, <laughs> but yeah, I know that, that uh, stomach is full, full, full. I was also very bloated, I'm sure, with the, with the heat. I'm sure it is also bloated. But that's uh, the membrane around the tummy itself, it's very strong. It's going to take a lot. I was going to say, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. I'm hoping that the, the three of them can remain on this kill until the end without being interrupted by other lions. 
And so with this kind of wind, the smells are going all over the show. Luckily, there's not even a single vulture in sight. I think so. A, this must have been down, taken down during the daytime. Now, with this pride, you know the Telemati pride itself. Makey, yes, very nice that they took it down right next to the firebreak road, yeah. The Telemati pride, I mean, uh, they have gone through a lot. I mean, this pride used to consist of uh, three older females. Pretty much when I started with Wild Earth in the beginning of 2022, it was the three older females and then these five youngsters. And at that time when I started here, yeah, they were just about four months, three, four months old. And during the time, two of the older females in 2022 passed away. Left the one female with the five young ones, and then of course they had the dominant male. The dominant male that uh, was the father of the young ones. He was known as the S8 male. He was just a, sol uh, a solitary male. He didn't have a coalition, so he did not have any brothers with him. He was very really much a, a lonesome male, and uh, he, he did very well. And then he passed away last year from t uh, tuberculosis, TB. And when he passed away, all of a sudden left this pride very vulnerable. The f all the female with the five youngsters left him so vulnerable to other males that could come into this area. So they've been pretty much trying to run away and trying to get away from this area from other males that used to roam back and forth here. And by, because they were doing that, they were losing body condition and then two young males and a young female, they were killed as well by hyenas and lions somewhere that um, last year, not too sure exactly um, the information on that, and it was just left with these two and uh, one female, and then we were thinking, mm, just skin and bones, they weren't looking good, undernourished, and plus the older female also had, at a stage, she had a snare around her neck, so that was also a little bit of a, how can I say, a little bit of a, a damper on things for the pride. But now over the last two, three months, this pride has just become such very successful with hunts. Body, the body condition is back to almost normal. So, yeah. What a success story so far for them. And now they're sitting on a beautiful kudu bull carcass. And really, yes, uh, astonishing hunting skills on this pride. I think this pride has really worked it out now on how to go about it, and they, they know each one knows their role now. I think the older female has taught these two very well on what they need to do just to assist her in the hunts. Oh, a few drops coming, a little bit of drizzle, yeah? That's interesting. All of a sudden, I didn't even bring my rain jacket. <laughs> rain that's starting up here now so I'll quickly uh, try to put some things away in my bag I do apologize for a bit of noise just banging here but I just got to put certain things away here so it does not get messed up from the rain hello Alright, well we're going to try and just do a little bit of cover up of stuff here, let's head over to Amy.
asked Cedric, you do that. We also had a few drops, but I agree with him. I think it's just some passing showers. Well, everyone, we arrived at Buffles Hook Dam and I noticed that there were some ox peckers sitting on the hippo that was there. They've now flown off, but at least you did see them. They were actually sitting there and drinking, which was very, very cool to see, I must say. Um, now I've just been scanning around. It's a beautiful afternoon here. Wow. Uh, the reflection on the water, the colors in the sky are making the water look really, really pretty. Uh, blue, whites, browns, everything. It's just, it's a stunning scene, I must say. Panda's going to show it to you. I haven't been here for a while, I must say. It's nice to be able to come and see this water hold again. And there is a crocodile, I believe. I'm not sure, I couldn't see his tail. The one with the cut off tail is Vlad, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he's actually the one that says moving at the moment quite steadily through the water. He's actually more of him is showing now than when we first arrived. But an absolutely massive crocodile. <laughs> wow. I was just hearing the exact update there from Cedric about the uh, lions on the radio, which is wonderful news. Oh, no, that's actually a very good question. And I was just actually thinking when I mentioned the, the, the fact that there's a crocodile here that's missing part of its tail. Um, I wonder how that would have happened. It could have been from another crocodile um, that it fought with at some point and, and got it nipped off. It could have also happened when, there we go, it's coming quite far out the water now. It could have also happened when the crocodile was still quite young. Uh, similar to other animals, even um, elephants, zebras, uh, lions, I mean all sorts of things, so particularly tail injuries. Um, when these animals are still quite young, the tails tend to be quite soft and I think crocodiles, it's almost, um, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, scoots, the, the keratin layer at the end and when they're younger, it might actually still be quite soft. And so something like that could easily have sort of taken a, a chomp out of it um, when it was younger. Maybe it escaped a predator. That's also an option. Uh, maybe there's a crazy story. If this crocodile could speak, what would it tell us? <laughs> How a lion grabbed it at the tail and it pulled away and it escaped with its life. Who knows? It could also be that that croc was born without that tip of the tail and it's just a genetic thing that happened to this particular to well i think it's this particular crocodile it has now disappeared under the water and it's moving to the right hand side change of direction oh, there's the tiny little tip of the tail there so I'm not sure how much of the tip is actually missing I do see the beginning of what the tip of the tail usually looks like but it might just be a little bit shorter than normal But they can move quickly. It 
almost looks as if the crocodile is still and the water's moving. <laughs> That's crazy. That's how smooth they are through the water. And just behind him, there's a beautiful gray heron that seems to be a resident here. Juicy, you'd like to know if I think that crocodiles can smell other water sources. I definitely think there's a possibility that they can, uh, especially with animals that are so attuned and, and reliant on water for survival. I'm sure they are aware of the smell of water. The exact distance, Juicy, I'm not exactly sure, I think. Oh, it could be a good few kilometers that they have an idea of, of water in a particular direction, which helps them search it out if they need to move off. Well, that croc has now gone around the corner, everybody. Oh, there is a beautiful I think it's a Malachite Kingfisher. I am going to go up onto the dam wall and we're going to see if we can find it. But I don't think you're going to be able to see it from this far away. It's on that uh, bank on the far side of the um, water hole. But let me just go up onto the dam wall and then we can see if we can show you a Malachite Kingfisher. That would be incredible. If not, I will um, show you in my bird book as to what it looks like when we have a chance. Thanks, Amy. Well, we are here still, as you can see, this uh, young female lion. Uh, she's just chewing on the ear at the moment. She's loving that ear. And you can just hear when she's actually using the Conacea shears to cut through. You can actually hear that cutting. But we'll try and listen out again if she does it. those claws. Mm. See those claws digging in, just trying to hold down, so coming out of the sheath, those claws. I remember cats like leopards and lions, they've got retractable claws. Happy Brit, yeah, it is, it's, a, it's amazing how they are thriving. Happy Brit, uh, it is really amazing. It's amazing how well they've kind of, you know, done, as I was explaining a little bit earlier, and just the condition. I mean, look at the female's muscles now, her shoulder muscles are nicely developed now. And that's what we want. We want to see that happen. Well, I'm going to grab that whole ear off now. Huh? Amazing, like she's got like a whole selection of areas on this kudu to go for. While she's going for that ear pod. Oh, Kevin, I can't really. I can see the black dots. I don't know if it's ticks. It's just little markings and all that on the ear. I don't think it's. Ooh, that ear's almost off. Huh? Luckily it stopped raining now. I'm going to grab my binoculars out again and I can quickly just use my binocs. Yes, my god. We're just watching you. So I'm just going to quickly use the binocs here. 
Uh, it might just be like skin uh, stains, you know, like, like stains on the skin and all that from maybe mud or old scarring and you know, it's just little marks on the ears, it's not ticks. You'll see, and once the afternoon starts cooling down more so, and you start seeing once the sun sets and it becomes dark, the activity becomes much more. Melinda, you saw, you asked me if it's almost the, the smell of the, the carcass, of course. Um, yeah, it could in a way. It could. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be easy for the the scent to travel through if it's raining quite hard. If it's a heavy rain, no. If it's a slight drizzle, it's not going to do too much. You know, if there's still wind, it, that that uh, smell is still going to travel uh, the carcass. And it has been quite a windy afternoon, so I'm sure that uh, this this uh, this carcass scent has uh, travelled far enough around this area. So that's why I still feel you'll find later on it's going to be quite interesting to see what is it going to learn, you know, which hyenas and uh, maybe a vulture or two, but uh, so far there's not a single scavenger around yeah. So we'll wait, we'll wait and see and see how this really plays out. Even see that her head was already tucked into the cur into the carcass. All the blood on top there, the blood on the shoulders, all the dry blood. But they will groom one another and clean one another after this. No, I don't think I've ever seen them really regurgitating food if they eat too much, uh, African sunset. I think uh, they know exactly how much they can eat. That's, and they can eat a lot. They can eat at least about a third of their body weight. So a big, a big female weighing, what, 140, 150 kilograms, she'll eat at least about maybe 50 kgs, 40, 50 kilograms at a sitting at once. That's why you always get those big bloated bellies. So they can really eat a lot at a, at a time. I think she's getting tired now. It's hard work. You can see panting. Hard work plus the belly's getting nice and full now. She almost got like a smile on her face. She's like very proud of her of the of the kill yeah. You can see with that rough tongue of theirs, that's a licking, so licking the blood up, licking all the little bit of, bit of meat that's attached to the bone. It's loose. Yeah, no, we don't have many jackals here, that's the thing, so... Uh, the times that we've had kills, I've never seen a jackal. Maybe back in the days, maybe, I remember many years ago, uh, the black-backed jackal was quite, not common, but they're a little bit more around this area. 
Oh, she's had enough. But yeah, it seems like that does so. So those numbers have so pretty much dropped quite a bit. Now she's going to go flat now. <laughs> Done. There we go. All three of them are passed out now. But it was jackal as yeah. That's what they always say skulk. They call it a skulk of jackal if you see more than one, you know, like a group of jackals. A skulk of jackal. And they're always skulking in the, in the back end. See if there is an opportunity to grab a piece of meat or something from the carcass. Yeah, Roy. Uh, just so far, the only updates we've got uh, the Talamati uh, Schlamingala uh, on the Nongo Bamba, yeah, on the fire break, south of the fire break, on the fire break road, maybe about 200 meters east of uh, Sandy Patch Junction. It's just myself and Locke at the moment. Sorry, I'm just letting, uh, getting the other vehicle in here. Yeah. This is an old kudu, huh? Nice size. Even the size of the neck, like a, a mature kudu, bull this. And all the spirals and the horns as well. Maybe a good, like, seven, eight year old kudu, this. Greg, you say these girls have got the I itis, itis, I, itis, like something to do with the eyes. Oh, like one word, itis. Oh, itis. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh I thought it's like it was like an eye test or like an eye test. Or something. Uh, I just like uh, I'm eating like uh, like I feel after a, a Christmas lunch. We call it meat sweats. You get the meat sweats and uh, yeah, you cannot move. In Afrikaans we say mag is full, oog is too. Means um, stomach full, eyes closed. Maybe the young male might come this side for a bit of a, a meal. But you can clearly see the older female in the back, right, back end there. She's out, passed out for the count. He's, he is not moving. I'll rest for a bit, try and digest as much as possible, as quick as possible. And then they will come back to the kill. See if they can fit some more in their tummy. <laughs> the young male's got a bit of a like uh, sniffles there. Maybe it's like hiccups. Maybe it's like a line in line hiccups. <laughs> he's looking, I think he's like, mm, I might be able to fit maybe another two or three mouthfuls <laughs> we're just doing funny noises I'm 
No, Lilo, not these hooves. They won't eat these, uh, the hooves yeah, of the kudu. But it's like a young impala and all that. Yeah, they'll go through that, but not the, this, uh, these hooves. This is uh, very, very thick, thick hooves. And they won't break down inside of their tummy. So uh, they will leave the hooves alone. Hooves, the spine, the ribs, the horns, the skull, those kind of things they will not they will try and lick off as much as possible from the bone. But they won't devour everything. That'll be left for the hyenas and for the vultures and that. All the scavengers will come in and uh, really try and finish up the rest. Hello, hello everyone. I hope you are all enjoying those lions with that kudu. Oh my goodness, how amazing. Um, I have left Biffles with them and we are making our way slowly into the area, um, generally towards the sort of uh, central southern side of Juma to check on some hyena dens at the request of Kayla. And I know there are plenty of you out there who are super interested. In knowing if there is any activity. I did drive uh, one of the roads where there is a known den um, this morning so we don't need to check that one again. There were no signs of activity but I will head down to, to around Treehouse Dam where there are two um, known den sites. So we're just coming onto boundary now and heading down also checking for tracks this side I don't think anyone's driven here too recently between this morning and this afternoon oh canine girl you want to know from how far can I hear a sense that a kill has been made quite far um, it's so difficult to say in an exact distance but a good few kilometers I think hyena senses are unbelievable uh, they are so attu uh, tuned in um, to that sort of scent and even sound like hearing a kill being made and um, I would say five to ten kilometers um, they could easily pick up scent or sound but that does depend on a few different conditions canine girl including um, the wind being a massive factor in that of course the more it can extend that range quite significantly from maybe just one or two kilometers to you know five or six There have also been signs of buffalo. I was just seeing some tracks there now. There were buffalo tracks heading all the way um, into uh, Buffalo's Hook Dam along the road we were driving. And I can see some more walking along here. So they've been around. I'm not sure if it's that exact same group from, that, from last night that we had. But also just checking with the buffalo tracks if there are any lion tracks. We know that Cedric has those Talamatis, which is wonderful to know that that lioness is being successful. She's killing, she's enjoying 
um, you know, being able to provide and she's doing such a good job of it as well. I'm keeping my eyes open though, just to make sure we don't miss anything. Sorry, Joe, can you just go again with that question, please? Ooh. Christian, hello. You want to know if I have a favorite dam at Juma yet? Eee, I, feel, I feel like it's wrong to just pick one. They all have their charms, I must say. Um, hmm. I had a really special um, moment at Buffalo Dam in my last and here. I remember, I think I was with you, Panda, and um, we arrived quite early in the morning and we sat and just enjoyed this beautiful time with the birds and the sunlight and it was just so so pretty and um, and so that was really really special but then again on the other hand I do really um, love the Gauri Dam the main dam that we, is very close to where we stay at camp and and what's on the the dam camp that everyone can watch at home so that's also oh but then treehouse and twin dams are also lovely but i think number one christian would have to be buffalo dam there are a few little pans as well that i really like they're not always permanently full with water of course if we if we're going by the area that we can drive on I most certainly have to choose Chitwa Dam. <laughs> that dam is just fantastic and I'm thinking maybe we'll actually stop by Chitwa this afternoon depending how things go on Juma just to go past there. actually a beautiful view from here um, and the sun is a bit high but maybe later we can come and see if there's a sunset we've got sort of a view from above looking down slight sort of descent here down a hill That's actually such an interesting question. You want to know if predators use the sun to their advantage. I think it's possible that they do. I mean, look, in a way they could use the sun because uh, prey species are, they don't expect to be hunted as much when the sun is out. Um, all right so it looks like they're young male to the left and the older female here on the right hand side has decided to come down for a little bit of a drink luckily uh, he's a little pan or not a pan actually it's a runoff it's like a, a water drain that comes off the road to divert the water off the road and there's a little bit of water that they're trying to get to no no you're going the wrong way and of course drinking water while they are feeding while they're busy feeding on uh, kills very important it just helps here uh, with the digestion of the meat Well done, girl. 
Also the older female saying, I'm so happy for her. Marvellous job. I want to go and lie down there. Yep. Go back to the kill. Well, yeah, Joyce was uh, sure that the, it has made them quite thirsty. All that feeding on the a nice kudu kill. I think the other one looks female's going to go back. I wonder if she's not going to go and tuck into that food now. <laughs> We've got the. You can see. <laughs> You can see he's little nuggets, see? Eh? <laughs> he's little golden nuggets. Alright, let's uh, I think uh, they're going back to the kill that side, so I'm gonna go slowly back out here. Yeah? And then I'm gonna go, just gonna go around. Sorry, my boy. I'm gonna just try to. No, you guys are finished. Alright, let's just move on. Alright, let's reverse out here. Yeah? Let him be there. Let's get back to the kill. Oh. Hey, they had a little bit of drink, but it's nice for them. At least they got a little bit of water right here for them. If not, they would have gone to Baobab Dam. The Baobab Dam is just, just down, like 200 meters from where we are now. Also going flat. Is she at the kill? No, no, she also went to go and lie down. We'll just uh, be patient here yeah, for the for the afternoon. Um, uh, Paul, let me know what do you think. What do you feel? Okay. I'm just going to try and position the vehicle right here for Paul to get what he needs to get. Well, hello everybody. So cool to see those lions drinking, oh my word. And here we are and found a few elephants. Now this one is hiding away from us a little bit. I'm hoping that they do come out and say hello. As we were driving down this road, there is just to our left hand side, quite a big mud wallow. And um, from a distance, I could just see the road was a mess. It was all splashed with mud and there were elephant footprints everywhere and I said oh my word the elephants have been here and we looked inside and we can see um, how much there's either one or a few elephants really made a massive mess here and as I looked to my right we saw the elephants so there they are There we go, it came out a little bit more for us, Panda. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> We've had all the luck with the elephants today.
Olive, hello. You want to know why do elephants have so many veins in their ears? Olive, it is a great question because if you don't know, it does look a little bit strange for an elephant's ears so full of veins and we can see them there. Actually, thanks Panda, that's fantastic. Especially the back, oh, look there around the neck. It's very soft skin there behind the ear and those veins run um, to and from the, the ear there. And all of it's all to do with heating and cooling down. So an elephant can't cool down in the way that we can sort of with sweat and then the wind blows and we cool down. So what happens for an elephant in order to do what's called thermoregulation is that there's a vast network of blood vessels in the ears and because the, th the, the skin on the ear is very thin, Olive, uh, it allows the blood to pass through very close to the surface and when that happens it can come in contact with the cool uh, environment or the or the breeze that's blowing and then that blood cools down it heads off into the brain and it helps to cool down the elephant so that is why that network of veins are there in the ear and that's why we see elephants flapping their ears it's not always a sign of agitation in fact most of the time it's actually them just trying to get a breeze to flow over their ear um, so that the, the blood in the, in the blood vessels can cool down. There's a few more moving now across. Kevin, you want to know if a herd can have more than one matriarch? No, they cannot. So an elephant herd is led by one female and I've, I've never been aware or heard of anything where there were two matriarchs um, within one herd. It is, it is always one uh, particular female, usually the oldest, uh, the largest female who leads the herd. Panda, I'm just going to move in here a little bit, see if we can get a... Oh, this elephant's moving slightly towards us. Actually, yeah, it's coming this way, so let's just give it a second. Hello. <laughs> always amazes me sometimes the trees that these elephants can eat it's currently snacking there well on some grass but sometimes they eat leaves from spike thorns and lots of different thorn trees I'm not sure if you can hear it at home, but we can actually hear when that elephant pulls out some of the grass. Now, these eddies have actually moved off completely into the right hand side, so it's quite thick there. We are going to leave them be, but it was lovely to spend some time with them and hopefully we'll find some more as we go on this afternoon but we're going to keep heading on um, 
and I'm gonna reverse panda maybe let's just show everyone what we were talking about what do you think <clears throat> about what happened in the road that we saw I just want to make sure panda can get it is that fine so this is what we saw when we were coming down the road just a massive mess I could see the color of the road had completely changed there on the right hand side and that was a um, a, a massive amount of mud that had been displaced from that water hole And so they came and had, well, a elephant. I didn't actually see too much mud on the ones that we could see there. But there were definitely some elephants here that made a mess. <laughs> it was cool to show you that. So that's what, what elephants love to do, actually, in a lot of ways, is to come when it's, the weather's warmed up like it has today. And just put some mud on themselves. We are still looking for whatever else we can find here this afternoon, everybody. And while we head towards the, uh, to check up on those hyena dens, you are going to head back over to Cedric. Thank you, Amy. And uh, we're still, yeah, no, no changes. So three. The three lions are still very much fast asleep here. One just got their head up now because the vehicle has just pulled into the sighting. And uh, yeah, we are just going to sit here patiently. Oh, you can see another vehicle moving at the other end. So did get their attention. Come and eat for us. Just a little, a little bit. Yeah, but this will last him for a good uh, day or two. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, I'll still have, still be on the. No, no, Chili B, I think, uh, you know, they, if, they, if the black tail males have to do a rock cup here, no, these lines are going to run. There's no defending a kill or anything. No, they are going to run. They're going to defend themselves to get away from you. That'll be the best option. If they're going to try and challenge the males, uh, that'll be very, very stupid. That'll be pretty much fatal for these youngsters. So, no, the black diamonds have to come out. They will... These three will run very quickly away from this area. And Kumas, that big pride of lions. Well, clearly this female and the young ones, will, they'll pick up on that uh, pride. That's okay. Well, we are challenging seven, eight, nine lions, big females. Um, well, I'm not going to hang around here. I'm not going to challenge all of them. I'll rather get out of the area. So, yeah, they will They'll run. There's no protection on this kill from other lions, unless it's just one, maybe one female that's coming out. There's one female coming uh let's say for instance, just give a, I'll just give a, a rough uh, uh, a scenario. If like Chela, for instance, from Nkuma by herself. Uh, she stumbles across uh, upon this kill. And yeah, well, then we've got these three against one female. So outnumbered. So then they'll try and defend. But other than that, anything more, uh, they're going to try and rather run. And I think that's what they've been doing for the last uh, several months. From have been running from other lines, running from the coalition of males. So they've tried to avoid any heavy confrontation. Unfortunately, they have bumped into one or two of them. And they, they, had, they did pick up some, some nice scarring on their backs and all that, but it, that's all healed. So they've learned their lesson. They've learned it. Challenging other lines could be a problem. 
Hyenas will be interesting. That's the thing. Two, three hyenas coming here? Nah, two, three hyenas, it's not, that is just not too much. That's not enough to push uh, three lions off the kill. Uh, no, yes, it is two sub adults, but still, uh, the female, the older female will, I think she'll hold her ground, knowing that she's got the backing of the two sub adults. Um, if you're looking at maybe coming like five, six, seven hyenas starting to gang up against these lions, then it's a problem. You know, if you've got five, six, seven hyenas coming through here and they start pushing and pushing and pushing to try and chase these lions off the kill, then uh, that could be an issue. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's uh, one of the scenarios that I think, you know, most likely, if anything does play out, it'll be that. It, it is, I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. That thing is going to burst very soon. I agree with you. It is, I think, all the fermentation that's pl uh, taking place inside that tummy, um, yeah, it is really expanding. Luckily, it's not that hot today, but, uh, yeah, it is expanding. It's looking like a balloon, a huge balloon. Oh, if that thing pops and it comes on, sprays on top of us. I think, yeah, I will not be a happy, happy camper at all. <laughs> I will be so bleak with life. Uh, I'll actually run to Baobab Dam and dive in there. Yeah, I know. That, that's, that won't be pretty. Just one bite there. I think, who was it? It was Mvula. I think it was Mvula, a male leopard, many years ago. He was busy feeding on a, a zebra. And what was happening, that zebra, of course, everything was a dead zebra, but it was bloated. Just, you know, just gas, plenty of gas. And then he popped the stomach or something, and uh, he got a face full of this fuzzy blood goo stuff on him. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we cannot escape elephants today, Panda, no. from the beginning to the end. And uh, we have this beautiful herd here. There's actually, I can just see two, but there's a few more up on the right-hand side. And I think we have seen this female before. You had her with Cedric the other day. She has very particular shaped tusks. And the sunlight on them at the moment is just amazing. So we're just going to sit here and enjoy. <laughs> that little one's trying to eat whatever that is. It's dropped it a few times. Hello little one. You got some spaghetti? <laughs> oh, you are so brave. Are you going to have a drink? Oh, no, you're going to throw us with water. <laughs> it's coming back for us, part of it.
All right, everyone, we have a herd of Ellie's here. They have just moved off to the left, a mom and her calf. So I am going to reposition the vehicle so that we can show you them. Sorry, Jared, if you can just repeat that question. Something about the tusks of elephants. Philip, you want to know if the tusks of elephants in the same families look similar? Hmm. I think there's definitely genetics have a big part to play in elephant tusks and it's not that let's say because this mom has tusks shaped like this that her calf is going to have the exact same tusks because of course there is um, not only her genetics but the bull who mated with her as well um, and so I think there's, there are possibilities that there's genetics that will be passed down, but it might not be in the immediate generation. It might come out again, let's say, um, in this female's granddaughter or something or great granddaughter, or there may be something that comes out with a particular shaping of the tusks. But there, there, there can be similarities within a herd. You can notice all their tusks are sort of, not all of them, but there can be a few elephants that share a similar trait. So I think the answer to your question, Philip, is yes. Oh, she's making some rumbles here. Oh. You can hear those ears hitting against the body as well. And watch how she chews everybody she's gonna bite and there we go the roots just fell off so often elephants will do that Jared I am currently at twin dams but that is quite close to treehouse dam And so she'll put the, that grass into her mouth and um, then bite off and let the roots fall. So she doesn't have to get all that dirt and sand, which is actually really cool to notice. It's something that I've seen over and over again with elephants, particularly when they're eating grass. So look now, she's going to chew off and there's going to be a bit that falls on the left hand side there. <laughs> the little one's also wanting some of you. Why does mom always have the tastiest grass? And there we go. Did you see that little bit of um, vegetation drop off? It's going to happen again. There we go. And those are all the roots with the, the sort of grit and sand. And it's important for elephants to actually um, 
eat as little sand and dirt and sort of coarse grained material so that they can live as long as possible and it's all about their teeth and the more sandy and grittier the things that they eat the quicker those um, molars in their mouth are going to wear down and so they try to avoid those types of textures as much as possible Mackenzie, that's such a good observation actually. You want to know why elephants have so many humps and bumps on their back. And Mackenzie, it's all about their bones for the most part. I do think this female is very pregnant. So have a look at her side. She's bulging out. Um, and if that is, which I think it is her, her current calf on the left, that calf is about three years old, maybe th between three and five years old which is exactly the right time for this mommy to be having her next calf. So that's the bulging on the left and the right. The, the, the middle of the back is the spine. So that's an elephant spine all the way down. The whole tail is also made of bones that are all connected. And that runs straight up the center of her back is the spine. And then right behind her head, those two lumps that you see there are her massive shoulder blades. So there you go so that's all part of her skeleton actually that you see look how she walks those bones are moving helping her lift her legs Yes, Sandy, she is still breastfeeding. So, Panda, we can try and maybe see. I did see her mammary glands between her front legs. Um, and actually, just now, the, the little one was suckling. So when she walks, often the teat is just behind that. There we go. Look at that. Look at that swollen teat. Okay, it's just behind her leg again. But if she moves when she walks now, have a look there. There we go. And it was actually quite damp just now because the little one had just been... Uh, suckling there so absolutely still uh, suckling her calf shakes I completely agree with you it is completely mesmerizing and we're so lucky to have this mom and calf in this open area here and it's just so peaceful the colors of the bush felt the grass everything <laughs> it is wonderful So I know we are watching these elephants, but Panda, there is a woodland kingfisher 
right here. Just before we send you over to Cedric, just have a look here, everybody. Just saw at the corner of my eye, right in the tree next to us, there is a beautiful woodland kingfisher who is sitting still. So, Jared, you can let me know if we need to go, but if we can stay for just a second to look at this bird, that'll be awesome. And that's the beauty of the bush everyone you can be looking at one thing and all of a sudden there's actually something else to see as well and there you can see some of that beautiful turquoise color oh man amazing oh i just made a poop i wonder if it's gonna fly But I love on the woodland kingfisher that bit of sort of uh, blue coloration behind the head. It's not something that you often notice, but it almost looks like it's spray painted on there just behind the head. <gasps> and it did fly. My poop theory still stands, Panda. <laughs> I got a fist pump for that. <laughs> yeah. The other day with the battalion that we had, I was explaining how some, I mean, every time, I have seen a bird before it's flown away. It, um, if it's been perched for a long time, it makes a poop and then flies away. So the kingfisher just proved my theory. It still stands. Jared is affirming my bird theory. He says they used to have a parrot at home and it, before it flew, it used to poop every time. So there we go. I still stand to be corrected. Oh, I wonder if they are going to come back up here, Panda. I have no idea. I don't want to go too much lower just so that we don't do signal. Right, then I'm not going to move. I'm just going to stay out while we still have a view of this calf. There were some other elephants that were part of this herd that were actually behind us. They haven't come out again, but the whole herd, I think, is slowly moving in a northerly direction. I mean, a westerly direction, sorry.
All right, so we left the Talamati Pride for the time being. I'm going to go back there just now. Um, just left them for now while they are fast asleep. So I'm going to quickly just want to do a little bit of a, a loop around here and towards... What's, what now? What do you have? Again. Fine. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go to Bifazuk uh, Dam to the north uh, eastern corner there because Lama had a kill inside Torchwood this morning. But unfortunately, she lost her kill somehow. So she's not around there in Torchwood anymore. So maybe she's going to come back into Juma. So, yeah, it's going to be a quickly a plan there, head there. If nothing, then I'm going to return back to the, to the lions that's on the Kudu kill. Yay. Lovely way to start the sun set safari this afternoon with the, the town of Mighty Pride. Danny J, where well, we keep those kudu ones for the tent? Uh, you know, Fanny J, it's, you can't, we'll just have to let nature take its course first. Let all, let it, let, let it get properly cleaned, you know, by like, you know, the maggots and all those things. And then, um, yeah, well, we'll see, we'll see. Let's see if it's still around. You know, sometimes hyenas will grab that thing and run off with the entire skull somewhere and uh, it'll be gone. It's nice to take a look at bits and bobs around here and have it in the tent. It's always nice, nice to, always a nice discussion on certain things. Afternoon now it's starting, uh, starting to become <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're right and poor. Yeah. <laughs> there was a spider it was, there was a spider spider web with a spider. We didn't see it right till the end until I went through it. I just ducked. I think Paul got most of it. Uh, You're right, uh, yeah. it's not there with you. <laughs> Yeah, I just ducked. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's nothing worse than having a spider on top of you. Or well, that's if you've got the, you know, a fear of spiders like, like I do. And a poor as well, he also doesn't like it. Alright, let's just slowly... Heading to the direction of Buffalo Dam. Try and get there. Spend a little bit of time around there. Now, Rosie, if that spider was claw crawling up my leg, now I would pick up on that very quickly. I would feel that little spider legs there. Let's come back to our urban clearing. There's another vehicle coming ahead of us. I think they want to So yeah, it looks like they another vehicle that's just coming past us at the moment. Afternoon everybody, afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. 
Oh well, I'll take you some pictures. <laughs> A lot of guests are very happy there. It's nice to come on this open clearing. It's so many nice marulas around here, and with these marulas, uh, these marula trees, uh, always try and take a look up in every single one of them. Uh, you never know you might get up with uh, a lemon that is like a very fortunate lava a few times this side as a tsunami. Magic as well this afternoon will be nice. Will be very nice. All right, let's head over to Amy to see what's happening on her side. We are on our way to Treehouse Dam and we are gonna check out the Ahina Den that's around there and see if there's any activity and also just now maybe show you a bit of what the sky is doing because oh my word we are in for I think a beautiful sunset later but I was just saying to Panda this is the time that you want to be out in the bush uh, after a, some sort of cold coldish rainy weather and the sun has come out and now it's cool
Welcome back everyone. We do apologize for uh, my feed cutting off there earlier. We just had some technical problems but we are back and we have arrived at the treehouse dam to a absolutely beautiful scene here. We could not help but share it with you all. So let's just take a moment take in there's two blacks three blacksmith lapwings calling here and just enjoy the sounds of the bush Leo, you are enjoying this beautiful setting here with us as well. I'm so glad that you are enjoying it and that you are appreciating it, I think is the right word, as much as we are. And often it's when you actually take a moment to sit just take in, get out the binoculars, have a look around, that something may surprise you. We actually stopped first for a African hawk eagle that was perched in a tree here around the, yeah, close to the dam. And uh, of course, as I said, Panda, look, let's show everyone, it flew off. <laughs> uh, but I said, it's okay there's still a stunning scene here so why not share it with you all <laughs> Melissa yes indeed there are three of them we can show you them if you like and they are calling away there they are like they have a little song group band maybe they're starting a, a trio <laughs> and every now and again one pops up when it does it's chirping that's quite funny the singing lapwings maybe that should be the name of their group panda Oh, beautiful. Oh, and they've landed right here for us. And what beautiful birds, really. I mean, I know we see them all the time, but when you have a closer look, they really are beautiful beautifully colored with black white and gray and the sunlight at the moment is just showing them off wow they're putting on a performance for us panda private show I love how they do this little bounce with their heads. It's almost a jerk upwards. <laughs> I 
Angwane, you are really enjoying the show. Thanks for the great scenes. It's a pleasure. It has been a wonderful show this afternoon. We've got a show within a show here. <laughs> Oh, I never thought a uh, blacksmith lapwing could look so beautiful. But this is incredible with the setting sun. Oh, and you can see the red eye now. That's something that we actually really get to notice because generally it all just looks dark but look at the sun look how it's catching the eye how interesting everyone you can really see that now standing out just like a forktail drongo actually also has a red eye like that wow that is awesome hey panda Well, that one got something. A little snack. Sadie, yes, it is exactly like i was saying it's not something that we often notice um you do see it in the bird book that they have a red eye but because generally the light doesn't fall correctly to be able to see it, it just looks black like the rest of its face and because it's also quite a maroony deep red it also blends in completely and only when they face the light and when that light is at the right angle do we see that red eye one on the right is coming back over there we go Yolandi, I was just wondering about that, um, if these three birds would be related. I'm not exactly sure. Blacksmith lapwing dynamics are quite interesting. I mean, we know often they are in pairs. Um, Sometimes this may be a pair and it's most recent chick that's grown up now into full adult plumage and is still hanging around with the breeding pair. I think that's possibly the most likely uh, scenario here. Um, so they could actually have uh, be related in some way um, but they could also I suppose be um, completely unrelated and they're just all here I don't think there would be two males and a female because they would have chased the one off Now, when we arrived here, I said, you know, sometimes if you sit at a waterhole, things will come to you. There you go, Mac. Thanks. It has been amazing. And um, this beautiful lighting is definitely, definitely helping make everything look 
incredible, hey Panda. It's yeah. just beautiful. Wow. But Panda's doing an exceptional job with the focus and making sure that we get the best possible view of these birds. Thank you, I mean, nice having uh, blacksmith uh, lap wings. Oh, it's beautiful just to sit back there and enjoy their, their ways. And uh, I think we are very fortunate that practically every single dam here on Juma has got uh, a pair of blacksmith lap wings that's hanging around. All right, my plan now is that I'm moving on central. I'm going east. I'm going to go straight to the eastern boundary go to the northeastern corner just to see if we get any luck with uh, Lumba, that uh, leopardess. If she hasn't come over into Juma, and then I'm going to head uh, back to where the uh, lions, lions are. So, we'll finish, finish up that side. Hopefully by that time they'll be a little bit more active, maybe feeding and doing their things and you know, maybe a sit Maybe it would have attracted some hyenas by that time as well. Uh, let's go and see, we're going to see that a little bit later on. I'm just going to just quickly take a look around here. Ah, Kylie, she'll still do that. Uh, she'll still have multiple kills at one time. All leopards do that. So if there's an opportunity to grab something else, well, why not, you know? So it's not just the lumber. It's, it's all leopards. They all do that. So if they kill one thing and they see, hey, but there's a, maybe a, a little lamb or a calf of the mother that uh, that leopard has just killed, um, yeah, so we'll go and grab that lamb as well if it's... Uh, the possibilities there, you know, for sure. And I know that Lalama loves uh, having a few kills around. We've seen it a few, quite a few times. In one tree, she'll have like the mother Daika. I remember that time close to Charleston. Uh, yeah, you with me, eh? Hey? Charles close to Charleston. We, had the daker in the one tree and then not too far in another marula tree there had the little the other the little daker yeah. well, she's actually done that a few times Want to try and get called into this lion sighting again? Seems like they're getting up to go and eat, so I'm trying to get there. Uh, Matt, uh, is it can I come and join you or can I take a stand by there? everyone as promised we have come to check on another hyena den just up from treehouse dam and indeed it is completely overgrown there's no signs of anything happening over here so i thought let's just show you all 
so that you can see that usually there's actually that termite mound um, had quite a bit of bare ground there where the hyenas move in and out and because they haven't been here in a long time the grass is just completely grown over there so no signs of life around here at the moment so in a few days or so we might come back and check again um, also together with timing in terms of checking the hyena dens would also see a lot more hyena activity in terms of tracks um, sounds of them it's been very quiet even in the evenings I've heard maybe the odd hyena calling but it's nothing um, compared to when there's a lot of hyenas in the area and there's den sites and that sort of thing there's you just see tracks in the morning everywhere um, especially leading to and from the dens so at the moment there's really not a lot going on here so I just wanted to share that with you all we are going to keep on moving and head towards the last hyena den which is a little bit further north from here and um, hopefully after that we'll be able to enjoy a beautiful sunset with you all I'm happy to hear that Cedric is heading back to the lions that's wonderful Ooh, Steve, you want to know if termite mounds are ever washed away by heavy rain? I definitely think it's possible. You know, even though they are quite strong and sturdy and um, have the sort of very dense texture that can withstand quite a lot of weight, um, they are still you know majority made up of ground nonetheless so I'm sure that with enough rain or even maybe a torrent of water that's flowing it could wash them away they're not indestructible everyone I cannot tell you how beautiful the evening is here tonight mm. there's a crispness to the air the Sun is going down behind the last clouds this is the time where you want to stop and set up your drinks table Andy, you say it would be fantastic to something. <laughs> Jared, if you could just repeat that, please. I'm just going to slow down. Oh, Sandy, it would be, wouldn't it? I was just saying to Panda, there's some beautiful marula trees that we've just driven past. And earlier, before the sun went behind the clouds, there was some golden light coming through. And I was like, just imagine a leopard on that branch. I am looking, Sandy, I promise. But yes, rosettes in this beautiful evening. We're here in the area where Lalumba has been seen as well. A little bit more on the boundary, we came in that way. So I'm going to stick around in the area until the end of the show and hopefully that will give us a chance um, it seems she's coming out quite late uh, so the darker it is maybe the better who knows so i'm going to stick in the area and make sure that we give ourselves the best chance to maybe see if not her someone else <laughs> i'm just coming back now past treehouse dam and the lapwings are still sitting here and I think, Panda, why don't we set up for a sunset since the sun is busy setting back here in this spot. And the colors are going to change as we sit and enjoy the down and um, the lapwings are still in their spot there. There were some warthogs that walked past earlier. So that is also really, really cool 
to know that there are animals around here at Treehouse Dam. So we don't know what might come out. It's a good opportunity now. I'm just want to hang around here at the dam because it is a time sometimes that something might pop out to surprise us. We're in a good spot and there is a beautiful view. So why not enjoy it? Angus, you say this is your favorite time of day. Me too. I, I really, I have, I have struggled with deciding between dusk or dawn. And I have decided that sunsets are my favorite. A good sunset. Oh man, in the bush, there's nothing better. Really, really, there is nothing better. And the sky's going to change quickly now. With the sun gone behind those clouds, we're going to see it sink further. There's a few rays of light there around. And I think it's going to turn quite orangey pink. Perhaps even some purples. That also tends to come up with the sunset now around this time of year. And I think this cloud just to the left, sort of on this middle of the screen, is going to shine really beautifully going to catch those last rays. Yes, Prairie Dog, it is stunning indeed. Sorry, Jared, you're gonna ha I know Kevin asked the question, but I didn't hear anything else or gave the comment. you want to know if birds sound louder when the sun is setting um i think it's more more when it's sunrise when the sun is rising and there's a lot more cooler uh, air around moisture in the air and then the birds tend to call in that early uh, what we call the dawn chorus because their calls travel further with the moisture in the air water um, can carry sound very well and so they can project their calls further. So we tend to hear a lot more bird calls in the morning. Similar in, an, in the evening in terms of there is the cold air sinking, the hot air has moved off. So we, we get a little bit of, it's cooler in the evening time. So the sound can travel slightly better, but it's not quite as good as the morning time. So um, in that way, I would say yes maybe the bird calls can sound a little bit louder especially something for example the nocturnal birds like um, a fiery neck nightjar for example when they call their call sounds incredibly crisp and clear and quite loud even owls as well so I think they do sound because then there's a lot more cooler air around at night that those nocturnal birds actually do sound quite a bit louder than some of the birds who call in the sort of during the day.
Oh, meerkat lover, isn't it just absolute photographer's dream or cameraman's dream? <laughs> Panda smiling. You always talk about golden hour, which is past now, but earlier those blacksmith lapwings would have been a photographer's dream. Oh, Lau. Hello, you say, oh, enjoying your virtual sundowner with me, Amy. And this is, if you are on safari right now, this is the time to be having a sundowner, without a doubt. You'd have your drinks, your snack table set up, maybe a bit of bultong. <laughs> South African classic, some crisps or chips, some peanuts and raisins maybe, and then of course what's a sundowner without the drinks, so maybe a G&T would go down so well right now. So we made our way back here to the Talamati uh, Pride. As you can see, the older female standing up and us just tucking into the kill, and then the younger male that's just so busy feeding her uh, closest to us. I think we have a bit of a rest. That's exactly what they've been doing 
resting a little bit and then I will feed again and then rest again so it'll be back and forth all the time like that for the rest of the evening until you'll find that uh, maybe by tomorrow early, I'll say late tomorrow afternoon I mean tomorrow morning it might be done but there's still a lot of meat left and the young female of the Talamati Pride just sort of lying away from them I'm fast asleep I think she's had her fair share this afternoon you will hear other voices in the background it is here's another two vehicles that's joined us with a sighting and that stomach is looking quite uh, quite bulgy at the moment doesn't look too too pleasant. I don't think I want to be anywhere close to that that stomach. I live in uh, lions. Why don't we just target the, those ones? Like if um, you know, if you've got like a herd of impalas or a herd of kudu that's standing around, and they get spooked by lions, um, you know, the lions will try and try and single one out. Maybe they'll try and get uh, to see if they can see which one is going to be the weakest um, in the herd, which one's going to be the slowest, who's going to be the one that maybe um, you know that's not going to run away too easy from them. So that's how they usually will try and target those ones. As are many times you'll find with buffaloes, what they'll do, they'll try and chase buffaloes and chase them over and over again until they see that the oldest and the weakest of them will start falling behind and start separating from the rest of the herd. And then they can at least uh, go for those ones. So it's not always the case, the one that's uh, pretty much behind, that's walking behind the rest. So they also do a thing called ambushing, so they'll actually even chase the antelope and that into others. So sometimes it might be the ones that's running first that might be caught. It looks like she's had enough. Mm, this one's snorting at the guess. Looks like we just made it in time with the f older female busy eating. Well, oh, she's had enough. Maybe this male will continue. And slowly, that little mane is coming out on the side. So, really, it's. Oh, hmm. What's happening there? I can't see the other vehicle, I can't see the people. But his mane should have been coming out nicely, he should have had a little bit of a mohawk by now, little one. And a lot more chest hair and mane on the side of his cheek. But I think because uh, they went through a very tough time for the last uh, six, seven months, so a little bit undernourished at that time, so I think it's just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, the young male is not happy with his vehicle. They came here yeah, now. She almost does like a bark. I'm like, Rrr. yeah. Hey, yeah, you know that sometimes, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sometimes speechless when it, when it comes to these, some of these 
Yeah, with these guys, so, yeah. Um, um, sometimes, yeah, um, I don't say much, but anyway. I don't say much, I'll just uh, sit back here as long as we've got our position and we give them enough space. But that doesn't, some of them don't do that. Can you see this female in front of me? And of course that line, that young male line was just warning, like, hey, you know, too close to, too close to my kill. R.I.P. Okamuri, no, she was a little bit earlier on, you could actually hear that funny noises that's coming from her throat. Uh, she can be really easy. It's not that she can't breathe easy. I think it's just some funny thing that's in her, in her esophagus or I don't know. But it's, it makes just a very strange noise. But she breathes perfectly well. It just sounds like she snores every time when she lies flat. So well, hmm? looking nice. And I think this female is she's from 2016, if I'm not mistaken. So she's around about eight years old. She's about eight years old. I might be wrong on that. I think she's from the, she's from the 2016 letter. See, she's nursed, but she'll, I'm hoping that she'll get up very soon. But with that noise, and I think with the smell that's going around at the moment from this kill, it's funny that it hasn't, it hasn't really attracted any hyenas as of yet. And, uh, just trying to see if we get any, any characters from the Juma clan coming in here tonight. Well, I think tomorrow morning we will come here first thing to come and take a look what has played out during the night time. <coughs> Apparently Paul said he's volunteering to actually climb in up into one of these trees here yeah, for the night and he's going to keep the camera with him so he's going to do a little bit of uh, filming from the trees. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> I can just imagine. I can you know, look at cle clearly that uh, this young male is feeling a little bit more relaxed now to come back to the kill. Uh, Windmill, there's always three vehicles. Three vehicles, no more than three vehicles, and we'll have standbys. So you're in the Sabi Sands, that's how we work throughout the entire Sabi Sands. Three vehicles in a sighting, and then they'll take standbys. So when the first vehicle pulls out of the sighting, that first standby will then make his way in as the third vehicle on a rotation basis. But that's with this kind of sightings, we must remember. Then you've got more like sensitive sightings where you've got like lion cubs or leopard cubs. And, uh, you know, then you'll only put like one vehicle in a sighting with mom being around during the daytime only. You know, there's a lot of etiquette behind this. And eventually, eventually we, we get, well, we're very fortunate to see very relaxed lions, very relaxed leopards. That's why they're all, um, 
very calm with the vehicles, well, except this young male, because as soon as you do overstep that little boundary, you know, they're going to get a bit of a warning there. And clearly he gave the other vehicle a good old warning. I think, I think some of the guests have to change their underwear. <coughs> did a good job today. I ate quite a bit today. Some exciting action there, everybody. Oh my goodness, wow. Well, we are just leaving the uh, last hyena den now and still no signs of anything. In fact, there had been absolutely no vehicle tracks on this road for a while, you could see. Um, and so whatever animal tracks were here were very, very, very clear and there were no signs of hyena moving through the area at all. So um, that is the update on the dens officially done for the next little while until we take the next rounds to check. Hmm. And so, like we've said, before this is the time now where maybe some rosettes might come into the picture so I'm just driving really slowly down this road up this road actually I'm checking I'm also listening out on the radio if there's any reports but um, it's always exciting to think of what the last little bit of the show is gonna hold for us is finished this sky is actually looking quite plain all of a sudden again and but what we do have is that the moon has come out shining quite brightly as well we'll just maybe give it a little bit longer until perhaps we show it to you all but it's very close to full moon everyone and I think tomorrow it might actually be full moon. Uh, well, everyone, what an exciting sighting with those lions. Oh my goodness. Panda, what do you think about this tree and the moon, hey? I'm bringing out my artistic side here. Yeah. <laughs> just give us a second, everybody. Or your panda's just going to set up and show off his super camera skills. Ah, Jarrett's just said the full moon is on Monday. So two days to go. It's pretty much there, but you can see the bottom right corner isn't quite rounded. It's just got a slight shadow. It's not as crisp. I promise I don't always look at the sky this much in a drive, but today has been <laughs> the first sunset we've had in a while, I think, as well with all the clouds and actually being able to see the moon. So I think that's why uh, it's capturing my attention today. But have a look at that, everyone. Isn't that just incredible?
cherry you say this is just too gorgeous absolutely cherry it is fantastic really like i say i actually haven't seen the moon for a while so we're taking some time to just appreciate it Just a vehicle coming past everyone you may hear. And I always love a dead tree. I know that might sound strange, but there's something about the silhouette of these trees that is just so, so beautiful. All right, well, while we sit and continue to enjoy the moon, you are gonna head back over to the lines with Cedric. That is true, I mean, very nice with always the dead tree in the, in the foreground of a sunset or even a sunrise. And we've got this, little, this young male, he's still enjoying all the bits here around on this uh, kudu carcass. <laughs> but I still think this, is, this must have been a spectacular takedown on this kudu to see this uh, unfolding and happening. I know I feel sorry for the kudu. I mean, it is quite sad, but you know, it's also food for lions. But just to see the entire hunt and takedown, it must have been something quite amazing. Oof, look at the, look at the power. Sheesh, drag that, you know how heavy that, that carcass is. I do apologize for a little bit of a break up in picture. I think our uh, Juma uh, Link has uh, just had a bit of a drop in signal there, so I do apologize about that. And definitely tomorrow morning, this will be a perfect place to start our sunrise safari. Maybe we'll let, uh, maybe Amy might, I'll actually let Amy come up here tomorrow morning. See if she can get into this area tomorrow first thing. And try and follow up on this. Sorry, I'm just talking very soft because uh, I don't want to talk loud. I don't want to peek. I don't want my mic to peak. The audio is very, very touch and go at the moment, so I don't want to scare my mic away. <laughs> It's a nice thing about the morning. That's just a nice thing. So when you get here in the morning, you don't know what's played out during the night time. Because anything could have played out during the night. You know, for like tonight, 
maybe the black damn males might come in here maybe another pride of lions might come in here because of the scent of this kill a whole lot of hyenas might end up here so a nice thing about the early morning when you've got something exciting like this and you come into that sighting you, it's that moment of what has happened let's see No, no, not at all, Stacey. They, it's only really the leopard that plucked the fur, fur of its kill. The lions, they pretty much devour everything. They go through the hide, they'll eat the hide. That's why many times you'll find even not lions will kind of cough up uh, fur balls and uh, it like gathers up and then they'll just cough it up and try and get rid of it that way. But their stomach enzymes is, uh, and the acids is much stronger compared to a leopard. I think a leopard is not as strong. It's very strong, but not as strong as a lion and definitely not as strong as a hyena's. A hyena's got one of the strongest stomach enzymes where it breaks down bone and fur and everything. Well, tomorrow night uh, we've got uh, a town hall update and uh, please join us and uh, join James and Andre Crawford Brunt at uh, 7 p.m. Central African time, that's for tomorrow night. And uh, James and Andre, they will be discussing the developments and results of the donation drive and the new vehicles it was from Toyota. I said I'll also announce uh, a new travel arm, the Wild Earth Travel, and it will also be taking questions. This will be open to all viewers, remember, to all viewers, and also be on, on, on the channels. So this will happen straight after our Sunset Safari, and our Sunset Safari tomorrow afternoon is going to be extended by, a thi by 30 minutes extra. So uh, Sunset Safari will be from 3.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. and it will be followed straight after the sunset uh, safari and it will be followed by the town hall chat by James and Andre. So make sure that you do join us for that. everyone well I promise the moon is still looking absolutely beautiful but we have come down to a clearing um, I just wanted to check it out before we come to the end of the drive and then I did a turn and I'm taking um, one of the main leopard highway roads called Zoe slowly back up towards the north so this is where there were tracks of tortoise pan this morning so i'm just driving slowly i've switched on my lights around the car and i'm just taking it easy here with panda and we're both on the lookout to see if we can see some rosettes for the end of the show there's been no other reports that i'm aware of so it would be being in the right place at the right time but it can happen
Ah, oh, Kevin, we do have enough time for a last minute leopard. It would be fantastic. I'm also just checking the silhouette at this point in the tree. I wouldn't be able to see much color, but I definitely would be able to see that typical tail that hangs down when a leopard is in a tree. It's just iconic. <laughs> Uh, when I've worked with different trackers I've always asked them because sometimes they can spot things that you just don't know how they can do it and they often say the thing for leopards and trees is that tail that is just looks out of place such a straight line coming down out of a tree Had a bit of spider web catch my face there. <laughs> oh my goodness. One of one of the things of the bush is in the summertime there are a lot of bugs as well as spiders that make their webs across the road. So it comes with the territory of being on a game drive. You're excited to see what Sunday fun day brings. I'm always keen for a Sunday fun day. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, but absolutely, Loisy, it's a new day. It's new possibilities. I am very keen to go follow up on the lines tomorrow morning and see what that sighting's all about. So we are in infrared now, but uh, there also is a spotlight here. So what's happened is that there's uh, the vehicles from the... ...once the spotlight of the ground, or the light, well, not the spotlight itself, but the light of the ground, and uh, so that these air gates can take some photos in it. And it doesn't really bother animals that, that much. Uh, especially your nocturnal animals, so like your night animals, lions, leopards, hyenas and that, they can really kind of reg try and regulate uh, the light flow. But this young boy, he's got the full belly, look at that, and he's still eating. He's, like, he's not stopping. Well, he's a growing boy. He needs to eat. He needs to tuck away there while he can. While he can. So I'm trying to figure out where is the best spot. Hmm. The rump. Agenda, the time limits, it depends on how busy the sighting is. And it depends on how sensitive the sighting is. So it's a, it's a busy sighting, if you've got a lot of standbys, yes, and you've got to, then there will be a time limit that we have to stay there and uh, then pretty much leave the sighting for the next uh, vehicle to come in. But when I say sensitive sighting, I mean like cubs and that, yeah, there's also pretty much uh, almost like a little bit of a time, time limit on that. So it all depends, you know, that's why I say you have to, uh, um, the discretion of the guides and that, 
and you gotta, you know, you don't want to go and shoot yourself in the foot and hog a sighting for a long time if there's a, you know, a huge standby, a huge lineup for it, because one day you're going to be the one that's going to be in the standby, uh, on standby for that sighting, and the guys are going to say, well, sorry, we're just going to stay longer. So, Oof, that's a nice part there, Paul. <coughs> you're looking at that. I just want to go and have a barbecue bride tonight. Mm. My mouth is watering for for this line, eh? Oh, well. He's got for the nice soft rump. Soft meat, then. Mm. African sunset, yeah, I know. I think it's been fantastic. What a, what a stint, and it's just so it's still got a week and a half left, and it's just been amazing. I think I'm pouring myself. We've hit uh, the jackpot of quite a few times here over the last few weeks, so I'm hoping it just continues. It just must continue like this. And we must just continue seeing this pride of lions as well, which would be fantastic. It's such a stunning pride. There's they're small. I mean, there's only the three of them, but you know, just just the history and what's been what's been happening over the last few months. So, great story to it. I can actually hear that female breathing again, making that funny noises. It's tucking in. Jason, yeah, it's been a, a fantastic afternoon. Beautiful Saturday afternoon sunset safari, and uh, well, we've got Lunga this morning, got the lions tonight, a whole lot of elephants with Amy. So, yes, it's been fantastic. I cannot wait to get out here tomorrow morning. I'm sure Amy cannot wait to get to this sighting tomorrow morning. Hopefully we can track down old Tlalamba, that leopardess, tomorrow morning. It'll be nice. It'll be absolutely amazing if we can just find her and just get a, a like, a, I guess say, a proper confirmation that she's got suckle marks and and all that. So, Linda, yes, got today was the bomb. You must welcome. Thank you as well, Linda, for joining us on our, our sunset safari this afternoon. It's, and I'm hoping that you enjoyed every little bit of it just as much as we did. So we, I can't wait to get out already. And I'm hoping that this pride stays safe tonight. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. They, the kill can get taken, can, something can steal the kill, I don't mind, but as long as these three individuals stay safe tonight. Because, you know, this is the wild. So, there's other lions, there's hyenas, it's the wild. And that's what makes it so amazing that we can spend this quality time with uh, a wild lions busy feeding on a, a kudu. Just like this. Amazing. Well, we are coming to the end of the show now, and I just want to say thank you to everybody for all amazing comments and questions that you have sent through to us this afternoon. We do appreciate it. It always keeps us on our toes, and uh, it's always uh, nice to answer as many as we can. But please make sure that you do join us again tomorrow morning on our sunrise safari, on a I'm hoping it's going to be a beautiful Sunday morning weather-wise. 
It better be. I think so. I think it is. They say it's sunny tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, please join us at 6 a.m. Central African time for our sunrise safari uh, to see what else we can find for everybody. But yeah, from these lines, from Muscles and Paul and myself and the rest of the Wild Earth crew, have a lovely evening further, and we shall see you in the morning. <laughs>